NFP has arrived. We're just a few hours before we start trading the news on Friday. First Friday of the month, we get the NFP, the most volatile thing that we can trade in Forex, and we're gonna be trading it very, very soon. What if I could tell you that I can give you with a 60% certainty what the pound dollar is gonna be doing in the first 15 minutes, one hour and four hours after the event has been released. Now, that is some really powerful information, and we're gonna combine it with previous closures on the month, and we're gonna create a plan on how we can trade this NFP event. Now that's exciting. If you like the content, make sure you like and subscribe and let's go straight to it. Hi, and if you're new to the channel, I'm Yanis, the Conscious Day Trader. I'm a funded trader by the Fivers, Instant Funding, and Darwin X with multiple payouts more than $30,000. So what we're gonna do today, another educational video is not financial advice, but I'm gonna try and give you my take on how is the best way to look at NFB and what we can look at to increase our chances of getting the direction right. First things first, we're gonna jump onto one of the best brokers in the world, which is Interactive Brokers. All the serious traders know about Interactive Brokers and funny enough, they have given access to Darwin X. So if you're on Darwin X Live, you can open an interactive broker account and that will give you access to what we're gonna talk about today. Let's jump straight into the interactive brokers and I'm gonna show you something really, really cool that we're gonna prepare ourselves for the NFP. This is the interactive brokers Darwin X account. All I've done is open an account with Darwin X and then I've gone through interactive brokers and you can open an account. As you can see, I don't use this account very much. I've got $100 in there just so I can access the research side. We're going to look today for fundamentals and for economic calendar and uh, news release. So when you go onto your platform, you're probably gonna be on home and you're gonna see your portfolio. First thing we're gonna do is jump onto research. So we're gonna jump and we're gonna click the tab research and at the bottom here, normally it says new, if you haven't used it before, we're gonna go to discover. On discover, we're gonna go straight on to economics, economic insight. Okay, so what can we see on, what, what are you showing us, Yanis? This is just an economic event calendar, isn't it? Is it though? What we're gonna do is gonna delve really deep into the analysis of non-farm payroll, which is happening at 9.30 my time, which is in about four and a half hours time. So I wanna prepare for that. I wanna know what's happened in the past and how can I predict the price with a 60% certainty? I've promised this and I'm gonna give you that information very soon. So let's jump in um, onto non-farm payroll. We can click on it and we have got four options here that we can look for. First, we're gonna look at the impact. So we're gonna click on impact. So as we click on it, we're gonna see that non-farm payroll is an employment report released monthly, usually on the first Friday of every month and heavily affects the US dollar, the bond market and the stock market. It's one of the most um, volatile events for the Forex uh, market, especially around the US economy and the US dollar pairs. So what we're gonna do is gonna go straight on to the volatility. First things first, anyone that talks about NFB, the first thing they talk about is the forecast. So I'm here to show you something that is gonna be a little bit of an eye opener in terms of how many times the forecast comes true. We're gonna go onto event chart and that will bring up the forecast in yellow and the blue, which is the actual price of the NFP. How many times in the last year have you seen that yellow be extremely out of proportion to where the actual price of the NFP came in. I would say that prediction of the forecast, I wouldn't pay so much attention to it. And definitely I wouldn't be looking to create trading opportunities around forecast. Because most of the times you can have some really big surprises and it can affect the dollar either direction. So even if it meets the direction, we're gonna see in the data that a lot of the times it doesn't play a role. What does play a role though is statistics. And statistics, statistics don't lie. That's what we're gonna look up next. And we have the same four dashboards here, and we're gonna go on to price chart. Now, this is really, really cool. We have the, the price chart of what happened in terms of forecast. We can see that the actual price was 353. It came in at 175. So that is an actual miss. We can zoom into this, and we can see when the event came up or what happened to that event and how what the impact it had to the dollar. For, for the pound dollar, we can see here, for instance, a, a drop which remains strengthening in the dollar. However, um, the uh, strengthening of the dollar, why? Because the actual number came in a lot, lot higher as an example of one of these. And you can go to all the events and you can see what the price action had in terms of forecast to actual 
um, data coming out. Now, I don't think this is the best way to analyze this, and we're going to see why. Now, let's look at something more impactful, and we're going to go to impact, but first, we're going to go to volatility. Like I promised, guys, here we go. This is where we're going to look at the first 15 minutes of the non-farm payroll which has happened in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 events. So out of 12 events on the pound dollar with a 50% certainty, so that means about six events out of 12, we had a bearish price action from the non-farm payroll. With an ATR, so the, the actual price movement, the average range was 47 pips. This is really, really key information and why? Because if I know how much it's going to move, I can look at potentially where I can put my stops and where I can put my profit targets. And the percentage of this is telling me that the 15 minute is quite an unpredictable uh, area to focus. Because yes, 50% is not much. We've got 42% 42, 42 ended bullish with an 8% ended neutral. So it's not telling me a lot there. But what if I leave it and I go to the next half hour, half hour after the event? Now, this is more telling. After 30 minutes of the NFP event release, 58% of the time, let's round it up to 60, 60% 60 of the time we've had bearish movement on the pound dollar. That is quite telling. What about the next hour? We can see the manipulation of the pound dollar in the first 30 minutes. That's why I say a lot of the times so if people follow me, don't trade the non-farm payroll in the first 30 minutes because it's total manipulation. We've completely reversed the 60% bearishness to 60% bullishness from 30 minutes to one hour. Now, what about one hour to four hours? It stays bullish, which means it weakened on the dollar index and a strengthening in the pound dollar. However, if you looked at the price action in the first five minutes, we've got 50% and 50%. If we looked at the 15 minutes, the same. So the biggest impact that we're seeing is the 60% event prior. So very close to the release, 30 minutes. The first 30 minutes is normally the manipulation. And then we have a complete reverse of what price action uh, does. Now, is this 100% bulletproof uh, way of looking at this? And if I see 60% is going to be bearish or bullish, I go and trade it. No. But statistics is always something that we want to have on our side. So in the first hour, if I see a setup that gives me a, a bullish setup for the pound dollar, would I want to be taking it? The answer is yes, because I've got 60% chance out of 12 events that that's going to be um, bullish. And the ATR is around 63 um, pips with a maximum of 90 pips. So then I can really, if I'm looking for 10, 20 pips, that's something that I can really work around and start looking for a profitable trade on the non-farm payroll. Very easily, you can look at other pairs. I'm just focusing on the uh, pound dollar. Let's have a look, quick look on the euro as well. Similar setup, 58% was bullish after one hour. Let's look at the first 15 minutes, 60% on the euro. So maybe there's a little bit more telling on the 15 minutes uh, for the euro dollar compared to the pound dollar because we saw that the, the pound dollar was 50% um, pretty much very close to 50% direction. Okay, and finally, what we're going to do is going to go on impact because it's all right talking about percentages, but I want to know how it looks. We're so familiar with charts. I want to see how that looks in terms of charts. 66 pips, what does that look like? Look at this gap here. When we OTA opened in the NFP, we started in the highs of 1275 and we ended in the 1269. This is a 15 minute period. And you can see when I start changing the period to 30 minutes, we're gonna see what happens there. We're continuing to the downside. Now, if I change it to the one hour consolidation and four hour. So what can we see here that we can take into the future? When we are bearish on the pound dollar, it never did a manipulation. How many times did it do this? We can go and see the previous NFP. Down on the bottom here, you have previous event. Now, if I switch one event back, when we opened, we went lower. We pushed up, gapped up in the first four hours, and then we came back and closed positive. So an absolute positive of 150 uh, 
four movement pip movement, but in reality it was a 53 pip if we think about the average of the 60, um, 60 pips that we talked about earlier. What about another event? Let's go one event back. In the first five minutes, we go bearish, we come back up, back to bearish, back up to finish bearish. So overall, the original price action um, that came into NFP was a bearish movement. We had a manipulated move to the upside. You can argue that this is fair value gaps, theme field, and then a delivery of a bearish move of uh, 27.5 pips. So as you can see, what we can do is look at every single NFP and analyze it. How many times has it done this? Where it started neutral and ended up positive without a manipulation. How many times has it done the manipulation? Starting neutral, going bearish and ending bullish. We're starting to create a picture around how the NFP uh, reacts to the NFP news. We also have here, if you want to include the forecast, the previous and the actual event. So we can see when we're forecasting a low number and it comes really high, we did get a manipulated move. Why? Because it's so obvious that this is going to be um, uh, bearish for the pound dollar because the USD is going to be strengthening. However, we ended up bullish on the pound dollar. Now, the, now we can start creating a profile on how to trade this NFP event. And what I mean by that is if we see certain conditions, aggressive bearish move followed by a starting to be a bullish move, and we are in that 60% chance that the, the, the pound dollar is going to be bullish, I can wait until we try and find the low in the first hour. After the four hour, we know if this has been bearish for quite a while, the chances are that this is going to be part of the 60% um, data and we're going to be moving into a bullish movement. That we Obviously, we have another 40% that no, that doesn't happen. So we need to be a bit clever with our stops. NFP is a very volatile move, so we need to be extremely careful where we're placing our stops, and that is down to you and your risk management. Now, I'm going to give you an extra tip. Well, I, do, I was going to talk only about interactive brokers, but I want to give you something that I'm working around and identifying where is the pound dollar from month to month for the whole 70, since the 1970s. How has the ball, pound dollar been behaving in different months? So then we can also add that into our bias going into NFB. So what we're going to be looking at is if we switch on to the monthly level, and all I'm going to do is go here to the top, and I'm looking at this value here, plus 152. That's given me where the price is currently from the previous month of February. We're in March, and we're 1.52%. I'm going to go to my dashboard. So here we are, we are on Tableau, and this is a, a dashboard that I've created with data that is free coming from Investopedia. So I downloaded all the closes on each month from month to month and the performance they've had from the 1970s. And I've created a nice little dashboard so I can go back to whatever year I want and I can go back how many years I want. Let's say I want to go to 30 years. I press enter, that's going to refresh all my data. And now I know in the last 30 years how my February has been. Obviously, I'm interested in March um, because we're currently trading March and we've got the NFP event coming up. I can see that last year we had a 2.6 close on the pound dollar and we're now at 1.52. So we're getting closer and closer to the high end of that price action that happened to last year. We're only 1% away from what it did in 2023. However, you could argue that this is an outlier because the average for the last 30 years has been minus 0.1%. Now, if we drop it to the last 10 years, because you might say in the last, since the 1995, the markets have changed, are just interested in the new data, we're still an average of minus 0.3% close. And you can't see that because of my face, but I've got an average line right here that would give me that information for the pound dollar and the euro. Now, if you want to get the, uh, an access to this dashboard, you can always join our Vanguard. It's 19.99. Um, let me know in the comments if you want to join the Vanguard and I'll give you an upgraded link where you can come and join our Discord where I do Zoom calls and I have lots and lots of videos about how I trade and the way I trade um, repositioning and all the NLP work that I do to be successful. What else do I use this dashboard for? I also look at the DXY. What has the DXY done 
in the month of March for the last 10 years. Very similar information, just in a different format. I just wanted to see this as a heat map. And I can see that it's about 50-50%. So some months has been red, some months have been green, but overall, not a lot of zeros in there. We're looking at percentages around threes, threes, twos. So it gives me an, an idea of how much the, the dollar index moves in comparison to the pair. NFB, there we go. I told you that we're gonna be looking at 60% chance of what the pound dollar is gonna be doing in the first 15, one hour and four hours. Obviously, you need to have a Darwin X account or interactive brokers account um, to go and get that information, but I'm sure there must be other sites that you can get this information, but it's super, super powerful to know how the market reacts in the first five, 10, 15 minutes of the event and especially the outcome of it after four hours. Now take this this is not financial advice and obviously i'm doing this for education and what's helped me make sure you do your own analysis and take your own trades we're now just four hours before the nfp event i hope you well and uh, make sure you do your analysis and you do your proper risk management and let's go and enjoy the markets because it's just a fascinating area to be involved in and it's very profitable as well. Just before you go guys, before you go, just quickly, quickly, just press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It, it helps massively. It's the only way you can give back. It's through commenting, like, and subscribing. And I really, really appreciate all the guys that do that for me. So until next time, have a good one and trade safe.